Good evening, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to stand and speak in front of such an August gathering. My topic for the day is Oocyte Cryopreservation. It's time to chill. Before I move on, let me discuss a few scenarios we face in our day-to-day -day clinical practice. Case one, a 28-year-old unmarried woman feels lump in her left breast, consults family physician, is confirmed malignancy. Underwent therapies, follow-up declared her malignant free. Married after one year, failed to conceive due to post-chemo. Option she has now is IVF with donor egg or adoption. Case two, a young talented girl scored good grades through Houter Academics, went to top university, got a good job, found a compatible partner at her workplace and got married, settled, planned pregnancy after two years, did not conceive for a year. By then, her age is 35. Consulted physician, AMH was 1.2, going for IVF with poor result or oocyte donation. So, our society is changing. Cancer treatment has advanced a lot in the past decade. In fact, survival rates in all types of can uh, cancer patients have increased remarkably. Then, there's this ever-changing society of ours. There's a trend for higher education. Where earlier it was seen that in institutions offering higher education, the women population were just around 10 to 15 percent. Now it has gone up to 30 to 35 percent. There's a change in the median age of marriage as well. Where earlier women, women were getting married at the age of 20, 22, now they're getting married at the age of 25, 26. And trend in the age of the first child. We can see in the 80s, women were bearing the first child by the age of 21, 22. But now this has gone up to 25. So this changing society impacts our fertility as well. We all know fecundability and natural fertility in human, especially women, changes with age. A woman is highly fertile at the age of 20, 25, and then her fertility slowly reduces. But after 35, there's a drastic decrease in the fecundability and fertility of women. There's a risk of fetal loss according to maternal age as well. This risk increases as the maternal age increases after 35, 38. So we all know change in the oocyte quality and quantity changes with age. This is inversely proportional to each other. The women after the age of 35, the quality and quantity of her oocyte is low. And this all impacts our fertility, IVF results. So in a nutshell, women empowerment has led to higher education, better jobs, late marriages, late first child. And this in turn has affected fertility by more chances of abortion, more chances of infertility, more need for IVF, poorer oocytes and poorer results. For these patients, options till 2012 were compromise and change in lifestyle, except IVF with poorer results and multiple attempts, a significant number would require oocyte donation and adoption. But from 2012 onwards, we have two techniques coming into limelight, oocyte cryopreservation and ovarian tissue cryopreservation. Ovarian tissue cryopreservation up until the last month of 2014 is still considered experimental. In 1986, the first re report of live birth from cryo-egg was done. After that, for nearly two decades, there was no advancement in this area. In 2007, ASRM gave experimental label to oocyte cryopreservation. Since then, evidences of improved success rate poured in. In fact, in 2012, 50% of the clinics reported offering cryo-eggs, cryo of eggs. In 2012, hence, ASRM removed the experimental label from oocyte cryopreservation. This is a guideline published in Fertility Sterility in 2013 by ASRM on mature oocyte cryopreservation. So we see it has taken nearly two decades for us 
to bring oocyte cryopreservation into limelight, where we were doing embryo, zygote, and sperm cryopreservation since a long time, it was the specific structure of the oocyte which caused difficulties. Those were the size of the oocyte, the zona permeability, and the intracellular structure of the oocyte. Oocyte is the largest human cell, and so it has a low surface to volume ratio, which makes them less efficient in taking in CPAs and losing water. Hence, formation of intracellular ice and damage to cells. Also, in oocyte, the major microtubular structure is the spindle, which is responsible for the spatial organization and subsequent migration of the chromosomes during meiotic division. Changes in spindle organization were found earlier in oocytes when cooled. In some oocytes, chromosomal dispersals from the metaphase plate was also seen. But as time passed and we worked on this, new perspectives on oocyte cryopreservation has come into limelight. Increasing knowledge of cryobiological mechanisms gave major insights to the improvement of the freeze and thaw protocols, which included the change in the cooling and thawing rate of the oocytes and embryos, the change in the time and temperature of exposure to the CPAs, and the change in the composition of CPAs like sucrose, etc. Over the past decade, an alternative to slow freeze vitrification has developed. It should be noted that successful thawing of viable mature oocytes continue to improve with both vitrification and slow freeze. A recent study reported that meiotic spindle recovery is faster in vitrified oocytes than oocytes cryopreserved with slow freeze techniques. But there are numerous reports which show that these spindle, which depolymerizes during cooling, repolymerizes again given proper temperature, time, and environment with both slow freeze and vitrification. Recent studies suggest that post-thaw survival, fertilization, embryo cleavage, and pregnancy rates of vitrified mature oocyte is nearly similar to those of fresh oocytes. This is a study by Kobo. It was printed in Human Reproduction in 2010. He did a oocyte donor program with comparison of fresh and vitrified oocytes. We see that the fertilization rate, the top quality day three embryo rate, and the implantation rate is same in both the groups. This is another study done by Trocudus, published in Fertility Sterility in 2010. He did a sibling oocyte study, and we see that the clinical pregnancy rate and the live birth rate is nearly same in both the groups. Our experience, we at IHR have been doing oocyte cryopreservation for the past two years. The method we are using is vitrification, media cryotech, Strauss cryotech and cryolaw, ICSI is performed three hours post-warming. All embryo transfers are done on day three, and we do zona thinning of all embryo before transfer. Success, we have warmed 1,085 oocytes till date. Survival is 92.2%. Fertilization, 71.4%. Day three grade A embryos, 47.5%. Implantation rate, 35.5%. In terms of cases, We've done 165 cases with clinical pregnancy of 95, number of abortions 16, number of deliveries conducted 31, ongoing pregnancies 48. These are few indications given by ASRM for the egg cryopreservation, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. As we continue to do work in this area, more indications are going to crop up. We have done oocyte cryopreservations for the following reasons. IVF patients whose husband could not attend the clinic on the day of OPU and there were no backup samples. Oocyte donation cases where again donor was ready but the recipient's husband was not available. Social reason, a few cancer patient before treatment and oocyte banking. Yes, there are concerns on vitrified oocytes but large studies, for example, by Cheyan and Noes have found reassuring evidences that oocyte vitrification is not associated with increased risk or adverse obstetric and perinatal outcome, and there's no difference in the rate of congenital anomalies as well. A study by Gracia suggested that developmental competence and chromosomal status of embryos obtained from vitrified oocytes is similar to that 
of embryos obtained from fresh oocytes. Dominic West did a study in 2013 and suggested that oocyte vitrification does not disturb the embryonic metabolic profiling. Lastly, counseling is an important part of oocyte cryopreservation. Appropriate counseling is recommended for patients facing infertility due to chemotherapy or any other gonadotoxic therapies. It is also recommended that patients going for elective oocyte cryopreservation should be thoroughly counseled about the efficacy, risk, cost and alternatives of the same. So, the future is probable that oocyte cryopreservation will enter the mainstream of art in humans most likely in the area of oocyte donation. Thank you.